guy. You see this pile right here? Every bit of that is churred and flint. Pour a little bit of water on it to clean some of it up. And most of it's dark. Some light pieces. This little piece right here was actually the bottom of a probably an Atlanta point. I didn't dig this up, somebody else done. Still on the property I live on. But people like us, hey, this is a new favor. I'll take put that in my bag and a couple more places I want to check out. See they dug the crap out of it. They had any sense at all. You dig in, if you're one of the Marfec diggers, you dig from the front, push all that back, and then work your way back and just keep pushing it out. Most people around here, they dig from the back, put it all right here. They don't realize all the arrowheads I have found and all been on top of the ground, they've been up above. But yeah. But you, it's obvious, I mean, evident that somebody's been down here napping away. And so a lot of these are small pieces. But we can still get some uh, sparks from them. Alright. What we got here. This is all flint. That was underneath the cliff. It was Indian camp that somebody else dug up. They laid these rocks off to the side. So of course, I pick them up and keep them. You can see. So you know where they have been worked down by. Some Indian. A few hundred years ago. Same area, you'll find stuff of back in the, I don't even know when, but you find old pieces of modern day uh, ceramic, uh, glass. There's also an old coal mine down there, so it's kind of neat all the different years in that one area. But anyway, you find this flint down here that somebody else dug up. Most of it they laid off side because they're more interested in the arrowheads. So I gathered it because I can use my flint and steel. I live in the sandstone area, there's no limestone. So this is a, it's a, a gift from a hundred years ago to me, or hundreds of years ago, <laughs> whatever your take is on it. But beautiful spark. You see, you got all the different kinds. It's kind of neat. So neat. None of this comes from same area. See, there's a white piece in here somewhere. There you are. Right there, white piece. But I have found a piece one time, big around my fist that was clear. That would come from, it's white. You could find, you know, find white and green and different colors like that. More likely come from uh, Ohio, believe it or not. Uh, you know, the Flint Ridge area, they call it. And the clear, the clear and kind of white, but mostly the clear kind. You pour more toward them. Um, Bowling Green, you know, Western Kentucky, out that away. And some of this darker stuff, the gray stuff anyway, would be you can find them around Somerset, Burnside, and all that area. People local, I don't know if anybody local knows Burnside was a huge trading place for Indians. They found arrowheads and artifacts from all the way from South America in that spot. So it's untelling where that comes from. Anyway, my whole point is not to yak, but you got somewhere you may have Indian camps around it. Look where people's dug. They may uh, do the flint off the side or something. And you don't have a way to use your your steel, your striker, or use it reuse it as other tools. I don't think the Indians from that time period would be in this. It would uh, have a problem with this using it. Uh, these. Except for this piece is all right here on this side all come from a parking lot look how big that piece is and my driveway a couple pieces so if you got gravel maybe a railroad bed uh, <laughs> your driveway look around and see what you might got it's pretty easy to find the gravels just look for the dark stone And you probably find it here's a rough piece some of it you may have to take a hammer to and beat it hit it break it copper thob whatever you want to use for it to get the uh, sharp edge on it this is full gold 
come from a local gift shop. But look around in your hobby shops if you got one. Uh, park, if you got a park that has a gift shop, look around in them. You'll probably find something like Fool's Gold. The Fool's Gold, uh, I'll make a fool out of me. But, uh, Fool's Gold Real Spark. I've just sparked this one. I have used this one. Get sparks. Might have to take a hammer and hit it to get a flat edge. I did this one. But that's a way to get a spark too. Just thought I'd show you that. If anybody was interested, you know, just look around in your driveway or gravel driveways, parking lots, railroad beds. Never know what you'll find. And that, that's that's a lot of flint. Not all of it's going to be usable because it's little. But I'll find other uses for it. You know, here's a small piece. I was out here the other day looking for it and I cut my finger with it. I stuck it in my wrist pack. My wrist pack it has full of uh, flint and uh, mud, man. So I got to wash my wrist pack out. But anyway, even these little pieces will. As long as you can hang on to it, we'll get a spark. Pretty good sparks, actually. Thought I'd share that. And my friend Dave made this for me. Made out of a file. Nathan was asking about it. I asked him about it. Nate, he said that uh, that he will try to make some of this fall for some out. Because he, he was interested, I guess. And uh, So if you still are and he does make some, you're top of the food chain. But anyway, look around. Take your striker with you and experiment on other rocks. Who knows what you might have. Think you have nothing. And then up having everything, maybe. Thanks for watching. Alright, here's something I did last week. Last week's project. Something made out of a terrapin shell that a friend gave me. It ain't perfect. But it's something I have fun making. This is back. From sweat, it's hot out here. Here's front. Here's how you open it. Just pull the string. You know. See, see that dent, and there's naturally in there. You can see the hump right there. Maybe in there, it grows like it. Might have been what killed the terrapin. I don't know. You know, if I had it painted like a cat's America flag at one time, I painted it. Went back over to brown and uh, green. See, I've striped it a little bit there. And there's a black in the center. And of course, let's close it. Take it through the D ring here. The brass D ring come off an of old Boy Scout backpack. That's what it did. Probably back in the 50s. Old one. But, uh, stitching. Cross stitching. All the way up to this point. Somehow I messed up, went ladder, crossed it ladder, and messed it all up from there. It was, it was not easy so this at all. But I'll, I'll put some videos. I didn't get a whole lot step by step, but some. So I show that off. I, I love making things myself. Legal claw, the artificial, of course. It was hard to debate between the bear claw and the eagle claw. The eagle claw is just a little bit smaller, so I figured it worked for terrapin shell. Box turtle, whatever you want to call it. has a nice loop, which you can wear it around your neck. This string here, or on your belt. Said I made it work. You should fit any size belt. But, yep, there's that. I dyed it, the dye wasn't doing so good, kind of old. So I went back over it with acrylic tape or acrylic paint. So maybe, maybe it'll last it a little while. I thought it was cool, kind of woodsmanish, bushcraftish, I guess. I wish it had the outer layer on this one. I got two more, one it has completely, and the other one's got a little bit missing. One of my cousin found gave me. I found one, and uh, this one, my buddy found gave it to me. It's my second pouch I made, but I like this one better, a lot better than the first one I ever I ever did. I don't have no photo to post of that one, but yeah, I left it white 
Yeah, it's like a blue and yellow on the sides, which is kind of a Cub Scout look. I don't even remember. And I see had a deer, tip of a deer horn that was sewed into it. Anyway, I crushed it. Some books fell on it. And having the uh, deer horn drilled and sewed into the shell made it weak, so. But that's that. I used rivet here and right here, which paint ain't gonna stay on that. But yep, that's that. Thought I'd share it. But you, you know, it's not real big. You can work for, I don't know, a fire, small fire kit or, um, I don't know, musket ball, muzzle loader, something like that. Maybe something in that nature, maybe. Or maybe you're just kind of hippie kind of person. <laughs> Use it for a uh, medicine pouch or something. Anyway, that's that. That's cool. I think it's cool. I'm curious to see what I'll do with the other two. I think I'll make those a uh, belt too when I get started. I wish I just knew how to keep that shell, the, uh, the thin layer on them. Keep it more natural looking. <laughs>